It's about the God complex and what you mean by that. It's a big so, topic. <laughs> I know. Try to narrow it down a little. Um, most people think of the God complex as somebody thinking that they're God. But in fact, most people who have a God complex know very well that they're not literally God or the God of the Bible. They may not even know they have a God complex. So it's not it's not just people with an overweening ego and narcissism and so on who kind of act like well maybe it is actually they may they may demonstrate the uh, uh, attitudes the emotional style and the behaviors of the biblical God because the God complex it's not something you encounter in the East. Uh, when somebody says, I am God, or you are God, or we are all God in the East, this is well known to the people who grew up in the Hindu and Buddhist traditions. Uh, it is particularly in the West a uh, complex, uh, again, of the attitudes and the emotional style and the actions or behavior of the biblical God as described in the Hebrew Bible. But everybody in the Abrahamic traditions, which are Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. There are other Abrahamic traditions I don't talk about in the book. For example, the Samaritans, uh, the Baha'i faith, they're all descended from the same patriarch of the Hebrew Bible, who was Abraham. Okay. And uh, as the Bible unfolds, uh, we see increasingly that God himself the biblical God himself in the Bible is changing. His personality is evolving. In that, both sides of uh, life come to his service and enter the story of the Bible. And by both sides of the life, I mean here. That, that was a, a, a fascinating thing that I'd never heard before, uh, encountered before, was that the the God of the Bible was developing and, and went through developmental stages. And uh, that's that's really a, uh, a brand new idea for me. And I, I think it'll be a brand new idea for many people out there and, and for our listeners and viewers. So how do, how does how does the the God of the Bible compare to, say, the Greek and the Roman gods? Because growing up in the Western tradition, we all have more or less some familiarity, uh, or especially people who are interested in Jungian psychology will have had some brush with those gods. Is this God different than those gods? Well, he's a different entity and a different personality. And he manifested in a different uh, historical and cultural way than, for example, the gods of the Greek pantheon. Uh, the one big difference there is the fact that, uh, indeed, um, the uh, Greek gods form a pantheon of different gods who all have their own personalities and their own agendas. The Poseidon was the god of the sea and et cetera, et cetera. Zeus was one of the chief uh, fathers of the other gods. And what happened with the slow rise of monotheism, the gods of the Near East, particularly in Canaan, where the Israelites settled after the Exodus, they amalgamated the many uh, different gods of the Babylonian and then and before them the Sumerian and then after them the Greek, that take all the Greek gods all the gods of the pantheon, and they put, or he evolved into one god. And that became a huge uh, asset in certain ways and a huge problem in other ways. Because on the one hand, this god became a mega personality. He became uh, like the godhead and like a fountain that everything comes out of it was the beginning of a different kind of religious experience. The dark side of it was that Yahweh didn't have any siblings or parents. And consequently, before creation, he then would have been just himself. 
Now, we know from the oral tradition that he created the uh, angels, such as Lucifer, who was originally the angel of light before he fell and became a dark god. Um, but there were other gods, too. Uh, mostly in the Hebrew Bible, it's not, uh, as people often think, uh, singularly uh, monotheistic. It was, for much of its development, it was henotheistic, which means one chief god above all the others in the pantheon. But he eventually became just one god, and the focus in the Hebrew Bible is on the relationship the ancient Israelites had with this one god. Yeah, and you refer to him uh, in in one place. This was another big idea for me as the orphan god, yeah. because there's no there's no accounting of where he came from. He just always was. Yeah, yeah. I borrowed that uh, notion from Jack Miles, who illustrated um, that God did not have any relationships, never mind with humans, but with anything, because there was only God. Um, so when humans uh, come on the scene, uh, Yahweh discovers that the creatures he created didn't turn out the way he had hoped. And he created them to be, among other things, less lonely. But the ancient uh, people before Abraham, like Noah and uh, Adam and Eve, of course, and Cain and Abel, uh, they disappointed God. Instead of bringing him company and fellowship, they brought him, uh, as they would say in Yiddish, a lot of sorus, you know, a lot of headaches because uh, they did not behave well. They uh, ate of the tree they were forbidden to eat of, and that, of course, started the drama of the Bible. If that had not happened, happened, we would all still be in the Garden of Eden, and after a while, what would we be talking about? Because nothing Nothing changed there. 